we ready to begin? Good morning! My name is Misty. Come on, Ike, it's time. We would be honored if you would join us. The greatest adventure of all time. Yeah. We just become best friends. Yep. Come on, let's get in the character. Welcome back to Misty and Ike, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Misty. Hello, Isaac. You better stake your claim on this one, folks. It's a food Friday. Stakes are very high. Yep. Man, I had a third one. Uh, Stake it. Stake your murder. Stake your moneymaker. (laughs) Stake. That's so dumb. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's food Friday. It is food Friday. I love food Fridays. They're so fun. Man. Super fun. Makes me want to eat it. Uh, You know what? We were smart this week. We did. We are? We are we? <laughs> we <laughs> I just agreed. Eight uh, four. We did. We recorded because we always wait until after. And by the time we get to Food Fridays, we're like, uh, we have to end this episode right now because we have to eat something. Just choking each other. Yeah. For so the Donner party, we just start eating each other. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, we need to do an episode about the Donner party. We should do that. Yeah. We should a, talk to the head writer about super scheduling interesting that. Story. Got it. <laughs> Got it on my list. Uh, um, so if you haven't picked up on it yet, folks, we're talking about steaks today. It's, full of, it's National Filet Mignon Day. Did you ever have the guy that came around in the truck and tried to sell you steak door to door when yeah, you were a kid? Yeah. What was that? Omaha was that Steaks? Sh- yeah. Omaha or the Schwans? Oh, I don't know. I didn't have the Schwans. Maybe that was a Midwest thing. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. The door to door steak selling. How fucking weird. Man. How weird is that? I think we know somebody who did door to door. I was feel it? like it was Nick. I think it was producer Nick. Yeah. yeah. He sold steaks door to door. I think and he, he has just, a story about and that. And he did very well at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I can't ever imagine someone knocking on my door and being like, do you want to buy a steak? I'd be like, not out of the back of your car. No. no. I'm good on that. Maybe I could take yeah. your card and like order it online or something, but I'm not buying anything out of your fridge. Yeah, no, it's yeah. weird. Uh, do you want to know where the word steak comes from? I kind of do because I don't know anything about it. Well, this article here on mychicagosteak.com says we eat steak all the time without thinking about where the word steak actually comes from. You can stop wondering. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Awesome. It has been keeping me awake at night. Hmm. You know what, Misty? <laughs> Yeah. I'm wondering. You know, where I've the, been wondering too. Where does the word steak come from? You know, I didn't sleep last night because I could not stop thinking about. If only we could go to mychicagosteak.com and find out. If only we there was a place we could go. Oh my goodness. Out. This is actually a pretty good reveal. <laughs> steak, in the traditional spelling, is a derivative of the Scandinavian word steak. S T E I K, which translates to roast meat. Oh. I'm sensing a theme here. I am also sensing a theme. There was also a record of early usage of the word that dates back to the 15th century in cookbooks referring to beef and venison steaks as steaks, S T K Y S. But kicking it back to our KBBQ episode. Yes. That goi, 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 goi. was roasted meat. Right. So, do you know what Stelk stands for? Is it an acronym? Meat on a stick. That's the translation of it. Wow. Literally translates to meat on a stick. So, no matter where you're from, you call your food meat on a stick. Meat on a stick <laughs> or roasted meats. It's always roasted meats, meat on a stick. Huh. All right. Um, What's your favorite steak? I. Okay, so I know we had like a grand reveal last week about how I can't swim, and that was a thing. Don't tell me you can't swim because you hate steak. I'm quitting the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of steak. Mm. You know this. When we go to steakhouses, I'm I always get seafood. Literally having a flashback to our last corporate dinner in you Vegas at the this. SW Steakhouse, and yes. you got scallops. I got scallops, and they were fantastic they right were next to troy aikman oh so, i did you sat next troy to aikman troy. and i were hanging out having scallops he had a steak he had a steak and we watched the the water show and wow we were good friends by the end of the night um but yeah i always get seafood at steak houses interesting um for me it has nothing to do with the taste um it's the texture And I don't, when I was a little kid, I was very often a very meat and potatoes family Mm -hmm. and forced to eat a lot of meat. Raw, rare? No, (laughs) just often. Okay. And so as an adult, it's just not really something, I'm I'm not ever super happy about how I feel after I eat it. So I just don't eat it. 
Um, there's always something else that I can eat that like scallops and something delicious seafood. All right. But that just means more steak for you and Jer. Speaking of more steak. More steak. <laughs> what a transition. We're getting so good at this. <laughs> how, how much steak, specifically steak, do you think you can get off a cow? Oh, gosh. I That is a... You just stumped me on that. I just um, staked my claim on that. It's interesting because when I was a kid, that's what we would do. Like oh. the slaughterhouse would we would buy a whole cow and put yeah. it in the freezer. Because you're in cow country out there in Kansas. Right. Yeah, that's Absolutely. Yeah. But even growing up that way, I have no idea like what how much that translates to. Well, this varies with cow breeds and how uh, muscular the animal is. So we're going to uh, be general here. On average, a thousand pound cow, mm -hmm. 1,000 pound moor, can give you 400 pounds of beef. So about 40% of the animal translates to steak. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. You, the minute that you said moor, I flashed back to the other day when I showed you all of those pictures of cows with their hair blow dried. <laughs> oh my goodness. Will you, will you pull that up so I can show everybody? Oh, it's just the absolute greatest. I don't know where they're getting these numbers from. This says a serving of steak is three to four ounces or a That's quarter of a pound. All. That means that you can get about 1,600 servings of steak from one cow. I don't know a single person on this planet that eats a four ounce steak. No. I mean, the minimum ounce you can get at a steakhouse is eight. Oh, are you ready? So guys, if you're just listening, flip it on over to YouTube or um, one of the video channels because Misty just pulled up cows that have been uh, blow dry. And they look like little puppies. They look like giant puppies and it's the greatest thing ever. They're just so fluffy. Oh God, it's, That's just, it's fantastic. Look at, that look at it. Look at that little fluffer. Blow dried cows. Mm. I want to order blow dried uh, cow next time I go to a steakhouse. Um, well, I have a fact uh, for I you. I can't believe that makes a transition. But it yeah, does oh, actually. Oh, okay. I've got a transition out of that. Blow dried cow tastes better. No. So the next time you go to a steakhouse, how many times a year do you go to a steakhouse? Uh, at least once a month, sometimes twice, especially if we're out of town or on a job. It's every night, so a lot. How many pounds of beef? In a year, do you think you eat a steakhouse? A, a pound per visit, 30 to 40 visits a year, plus the steaks they make at home. I'd go 40 to 50 pounds a year. I cannot believe that you just did that. The average amount that an American person consumes of beef a year is 50 pounds. Okay, but... We are only the fourth highest consumer, Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. Does, more. does that beef number include the amount of hamburgers that people eat? It's beef. Right. But are those hamburgers really made of beef? I'm going straight steak because it's <laughs> food fried. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just going to say a lot of times, like if you're going to the MACD, it's about 75% right. filler. 90% uh, horse. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Horse ain't beef. It's not. Mm. Yeah. Um, did you know <clears throat> that of all the ways to cook a steak... Um, you know, there are a lot of home chefs that say that they can make a perfect steak off mm -hmm. their stove. Um, that's not correct. Hmm. The grill is necessary. The grill helps to preserve flavor. It also cooks the meat in, in, in an absolutely even way mm -hmm. because the meat has the ability on a grill to move to where it's seared evenly that you don't get in a pan. Right. So if, if, if you, you try did to, pan sear it though, you're meant to like do it in an enormous amount of butter and then keep the boiling butter flapping over the top. Right. But when you know when you see those grill marks mm -hmm. in pictures, sear marks, yeah, those uh, are technically incorrect, unless because you're only supposed to flip a steak once. Yes. So to get the X's, you have to rotate. Yeah, that's true. So that you, would make sense. You rotate once and flip after four minutes and then rotate again, but you never flip it more than once. Huh. Which I'm super guilty of. I flip it like fifty times. Yeah. I'm, I suck at cooking I'm, steak. I I'm, made burgers last night and yeah. I flipped them like a hundred times. Yeah, well, yeah. Burgers you gotta <clears throat> cook all the way through. What you know about the world's most expensive steaks? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> so the world's most coveted steak is Kobe beef. It's a Japanese form of Wagyu steak. Uh, it's an expensive cut that costs around $200 per pound. 
I once had one of those steaks thrown at my head by a music artist. Hmm. You had, you had some wagyu thrown at the dome? I did, because the, in Japan, it's actually cut in slices. That's how the chefs prepare it. Yes. And that person uh, was very upset that day, and I took their steak dinner to them, and it got thrown at me, <laughs> and someone screamed, I can't even tell what part of the cow it's from because it's cut stupid. <laughs> wow. So, Yeah. World's most expensive steak landed on right about here, right there. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. Yep. Um, Do you know you're never supposed to fork a steak? Excuse me? <laughs> you're never supposed to fork a steak. So when transferring your steak from grill to plate, you're not ever supposed to use a fork. The ends of your fork you know, pierce the steak and that re results in a loss of juices needed to maintain the perfect flavor that you've created. So you're supposed to actually use the tongs to transfer it from the grill to the plate. I just looked up the top 15 most expensive steakhouses in the United States. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, it's no surprise. The SW is where we prefer to go yes, most of the time is. when we're in what? Vegas. That's where Troy Aikman and I hang out. That is. That's number six. Okay. Um, and I recently, we uh, at our on our last trip, mm -hmm. we ate at, I think you left a day early. We I went did. to um, the Bellagio. Yeah. And we ate at not number, where is it? Where, where did it go? What? The, the, the one at the Bellagio. Yeah, what's the name of it? I can't remember. I can't I've remember been there. Either. Oh, Prime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is number two. What's the one at the Cosmo? It's real good too. It is, in my opinion, does not deserve to be on this list. Okay. I'm not a fan. Woo. But the number one. Okay, what's the number one? Uh, half of the uh, most expensive steakhouses are in Vegas. Are in Vegas. Of course. Uh, number one is Cut in Las Vegas, uh, which is... Not where what it's the average uh per guest price of a whopping hundred and seventeen dollars. I guess that's, that's what not they're doing. That, not, I don't think of that. I think that's just for the meat though, not for the cocktails and such. Oh, okay. Well, um, still, yeah. It's Wolf Oh, it's in the Palazzo. <clears throat> so I guess you know where we'll be going next time. <laughs> yes. The cut in Las Vegas. Okay. What's your favorite steakhouse to not eat steak at? <laughs> <laughs> well, like you, I very much enjoyed um, the the SW. Um, yeah. You know what we should do? Sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. Along the fountain, if you take a left, you go to the SW. If you go yeah. right, there's the fish place. They share yeah. a kitchen. We, sh we should be able to get the same steak there, but you probably have better fish options. We should go there. Well, there, were, there were quite a few options, actually. Like mm. I picked those scallops out of many options. Mm. They, I was completely content with all of the non-steak options that they had. They had a wide variety. Can we do a Food Fridays on oysters, please? We can. Mm, I love an I oyster. I know you do. I love an I oyster. I know you uh, we do. We should probably talk about like the different kinds of steaks. Well, right? and I was actually just looking at that. Um, so I've always been very confused by all the different cuts and types, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so is this... This seems to be something shocking to people. A porterhouse steak and a T-bone steak are not the same. They are not the same. They look identical. Both are part sirloin and filet. Both are double cut. You get more bone and less meat with a T-bone. Mm -hmm. Is this important? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like one of those, like, if you have to ask, you can't afford it kind of questions. Like, oh, okay. All right. Um, but let's go through the six different kinds. Yeah. Well, there's seven. Okay. But this only has six in front of me. Filet mignon. Let's put, everybody knows what a filet mignon is. That's a is. little round guy. It's a little baseball of meat. Right. And then there's a ribeye. It's in the rib meat. Which is the rib. Yeah. <laughs> there's the New York strip. That's my preferred. Okay. Because where, where does that come from? Yeah, cow. Uh, a porterhouse. There's a hanger and a flank. Now, a flank is going to be well, like... What's a tomahawk? Where tom do those come from? Tomahawk is... Man, I, just, I would have to look it up. I, here's what I would guess. Right? Oh, there's charts. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I need to look at... Ooh, pull up the one with the cow, where it shows the parts of the cow that it comes this from. This one or this one? Sorry, this vegans one. and vegetarians. If you are vegan or vegetarian, so sorry. please turn off this episode please right do. now. Please do. So the tomahawk comes from the rib. Okay, so it's right? like a full-on rib. And of course, so does the ribeye. Right. Right? 
Your T-bone comes next to it in the middle gut section there. Oh. Flat iron is going to be in your chuck section. Your brisket comes down there in the uh, pectoral <laughs> arm meets titty area. <laughs> okay, okay. Skirt's coming from the plate. Flank steak's coming from the flank. Uh, okay. Guess okay. where the rump's coming from? From the rump. rump That's where you're going to make your burgers out of. Right. But your filet so you make your burgers your out of butt? Yeah, you grind up the, the rump. You grind up the butt. <laughs> okay. So then you're all the, so all the good stuff comes right there in the center punch. Okay. That's why when you're when you're hunting cow, you want to shoot them. Hunting cow. Right oh, behind that's the ear. Oh, so terrible. Oh, PETA someday is gonna cancel us for this one. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't wait to like steak people and meet people yes. just r- light us up for the inaccuracy of what we've been discussing. You know what? I they can light us up all they want. I'm not a meat eater. So you can't get mad at me for not yeah. knowing about something that I don't eat. And I was poor growing up, so yeah. I don't know anything about fancy restaurants. He so put, I go there all the time now. He put eggs in his ramen <laughs> and hot I mean, dogs and called it cuisine. That was poor adult poor. Oh yeah. 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 Well, I learned a lot about meat today. Me too. Let's I didn't a know a lot of that. I'll yeah. order some scallops right now and some mac and cheese. Dude, I'll have some oysters mm. and a steak, right? Meow. All right. Tell us what your favorite steakhouse <laughs> is in the comments, everybody. And thank you for uh, checking out another Food Fridays. Stay tuned tomorrow for the weekly wrap up. And then Sunday mm. is going to be the warm up for next week. Just never go one day without an episode from us. That's right. And tomorrow we're going to try and figure out how to tell a story that involves all five of this week's topics in one story. That's my favorite part. Mine too. (laughs) Um, Well, since we're not at a steakhouse, folks, actually, we kind of look like we're at a steakhouse. We kind of look like we're at a steakhouse in Florida. Welcome to Misty and Ike's Steaks and Fries. Doral or something. Yeah. Doral, Florida. Mm Mm-hmm. Misty and Ike Steakhouse of Doral, Florida. Now <laughs> with more scallops. Mm. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.